right. How are we going? How's your volume? All good? You've got to put him the other way. I can stand in the rear. Three, 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 three steps, steps to your left. <laughs> All right, ready to go? Excellent. Well, I have some fantastic news for the Cairns community today. Today we are announcing that Cairns will be getting a brand new specialist domestic and family violence court. This is an investment of $13.4 million. And what it means is that women who make that brave decision to come forward will actually have the support they need to navigate what is a complex legal system. Often victims of domestic and family violence are coming to court for the first time when they bring an application for a domestic and family violence order. We know it can be confronting. We also know that it can re-traumatise victims. Our specialist in domestic family violence court at Southport was the first of its kind in the country. And a recent independent evaluation has shown that it is working. It is helping to keep women safe. It means more women are coming forward, but it also means that more perpetrators are being held to account and more perpetrators are engaging in men's behavioural change programs. This is such great news for Cairns. It's one of our busiest magistrates courts for domestic and family violence, which is why having a specialist court right here will really mean so much to victims of domestic and family violence. This investment will mean dedicated, trained specialist magistrates to hear domestic and family violence matters, a separate specialist court registry, safe rooms for women and children. And we're investing in upgrades to the courthouse to make sure that they do feel safe in these specialist spaces. It means specialist duty lawyers ready to help victims uh, of domestic and family violence and, importantly, all of the support services will be here to wrap around the victim of domestic and family violence. This is all part of our $363 million package responding to the Hear Her Voice Women's Safety and Task Force report, which really looks at how we can transform our criminal justice system to put victim survivors at the centre. We've got some wonderful services here to talk further about that, and then we're happy to take your questions. Sandy? Thank you so much. Um, so Cairns Regional Domestic Violence Service has a role at court providing court support and we certainly welcome the announcement today of a specialist domestic and family court. Um, as the Attorney General stated, this is often a really fraught time for survivors of domestic and family violence and anything that we can do to actually ease their pathways. But also the evaluation of the Southport Court shows that it's not only beneficial for survivors but also for the perpetrators of domestic and family violence. And being able to hold perpetrators more accountable is essential to actually starting to address the actual issues around domestic and family violence. So we um, welcome the news with open arms. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is a really, really exciting day and um, I can say that our service has seen firsthand the difference that a specialist domestic and family violence court can make to women, but also to perpetrators. Uh, we have a specialist domestic violence court in Townsville and our service delivers a duty lawyer service there for women. And the difference between the service that those women get, the increased safety, the knowledge, the empowerment, and the d reduction in stress that they feel going through that court compared to other um, general magistrates' courts is amazing. So we are really, really excited about this. Um, I think having dedicated magistrates who understand domestic violence, whose decisions are made when viewing issues through a domestic violence and a trauma-informed lens will make an incredible difference to safety for women and will also help hold perpetrators to account. Thank you. Hayley Granger, Principal Solicitor of the North Queensland Women's Legal Service. Right. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm very, very, very proud to be standing here with my parliamentary colleagues, the Attorney General and also uh, Minister Crawford. Um, this is something that is vitally important to our community. We know that the uh, Queensland uh, Women's Safety uh, Task Force, this was a recommendation, and as a result of that, we have seen an expansion as was recommended in, uh, in, that task, in that task force making those recommendations. We're now seeing this coming to Cairns. 
It's unfortunate that we need it, but it is vitally important. We know there are people in our community that will benefit from this. I want to thank the Attorney General. I want to acknowledge the work that she has done ensuring that Cairns gets, it, gets, the, uh, gets the opportunity to have this facility. It is vitally important in the delivery of justice. We are dealing with the big issues, and this is one of those steps in dealing with that. Thank you. Well, that's why I'm here today, to announce that there will be a specialist court and to encourage women to come forward if they are experiencing domestic and family violence. We also have our wonderful, hard-working, frontline domestic and family violence services here. They will play an incredible role in making sure that women feel confident to come forward. If all of the support services are here, there are specially trained magistrates, specially trained registry staff it will mean that women will feel more comfortable navigating the complex legal system. The more we can do to make it easier for victim survivors to come to court, get their domestic and family violence order, I'm hopeful that more and more women will come forward and certainly that's what we have seen at our other specialist domestic and family violence courts. You mentioned the, that in the other places where these courts have been set up that it works. I mean, how do you define what, work, what is working and how do you measure that? So an independent evaluation by Griffith University found that the courts were really best practice for supporting victims of violence to come forward. Women felt safer. They were physically safer because of the upgrades to the physical infrastructure at the court. More men uh, were part of men's behavioural change programs and were in those programs for longer. So an independent evaluation told us that this is the best thing we can do to make sure that we are placing victims at the centre of the system but also holding perpetrators to account. And that's the message I want to give the community today. Domestic and family violence will not be tolerated. If you are experiencing domestic and family violence, please come forward. Please see our hard-working you know, regional domestic and family violence service. Please go to the Queensland Police and please make sure your matter comes to court where you will now be supported through the entire process. Getting a uh, domestic violence order is at one stage in the process, but as we hear from police a lot, those orders are breached all the time. How does this fit into the framework of trying to reduce the amount of breaches and the incredible violence that often happens when those orders are breached? It's difficult to say whether there is more domestic and family violence happening or whether or not more of it is being reported. I think the community now understands much more about domestic and family violence. With the tragic death of Hannah Clark and her three children, the community is beginning to understand that domestic violence can be more than just physical violence. Coercive control is a dangerous form of domestic and family violence. So the more we know about this violence, the more women are coming forward, the more police are actually actioning breaches and bringing breaches before the courts. So just because we have seen a rise in applications and or breaches, it at least means people are coming forward, police are charging people with criminal offences if domestic and family violence orders are breached. As Michael Healy said, we absolutely want to see no domestic violence. We want to see women safe at home and in the workplace. But until we do, we have to make sure the systems that we set up don't further re-traumatise women and that we hold perpetrators to account. And that's not to say we're not focused on prevention. We're rolling out respectful relationships in all of our schools. So every child, no matter what school they are in, you know, from Cairns to the Gold Coast and everywhere in between, young people will be learning about respect so that we can break that cycle of violence. Just today, uh, charges were laid against uh, a person in relation to the murder of Kiralee Martin McLaughlin. Um, she was killed in 2014. A coroner's report found that it was her de facto partner that killed her. Charges were only been laid today. Is that a failure in the system that it takes so long to bring someone to justice? Well, I'm sure that there's many complicating factors in that particular case, but very pleased that there has now been a coronial report handed down. Um, and police have now acted on that and charged the perpetrator. Now, of course, that matter is now before the court, so I can't comment. But what I would say is that anyone experiencing domestic and family violence, please come forward. I would also say to the family, the friends, the co-workers, the people at sporting clubs, if you think 
that there may be some red flags in a relationship. There is so much material out there. There's a wonderful app that's been created by Mate Bystander Program and Griffith University where it has tips and tricks for how to talk to people about who might be in a violent relationship. We all have a part to play. Government alone, police alone, the courts alone won't solve this. We all have a part to play if we're going to end domestic violence in our communities. Queensland's very multicultural place and obviously we have a very large indigenous population. Will this new program make sure that it incorporates cultural sensitivity and cultural awareness in supporting those women and men that come through this? Absolutely. There will be a huge focus in designing a specialist court here in Cairns along with all of our frontline services to make sure it meets the needs of all of our communities in Cairns. As you've said, there will be a real focus on uh, victims of violence and from First Nations communities, from culturally and linguistically diverse communities. So we're going to take the time to work with our services to get the model right here in Cairns because what works well at the Gold Coast may need to be different here in Cairns and we're prepared to make sure that our services are involved in that consultation. Uh, so there will be a number of magistrates who will be trained to sit in the specialist court. Um, it will be up to um, the chief magistrate to determine how many magistrates will sit in the specialist court. Some courts um, tend to appoint magistrates for a certain period of time, say 12 months, and then they rotate through, but that will be up to the chief magistrate. But all of our magistrates now um, have domestic and family violence training available to them, but the ones that sit in the specialist courts, of course, get additional training. Uh, so again, that will depend on the, the consultation that happens as we set up the court. Um, but there are a number of duty lawyers at our other specialist courts. And as I said, this is one of the busiest courts for domestic and family violence. So there will be a number of duty lawyers funded for this court. When do you expect the court to be operational? So it will be operational by about the middle of next year. We are going to take the time to work with services and make sure the model works uh, for Cairns and also, of course, to complete physical upgrades to the buildings for a separate registry and a separate safe spaces for women and children. So we have a statewide duty lawyer service that is funded, you know, women's legal service have some of those locations and legal aid has a number of those other locations. So we provide a duty lawyer service throughout Queensland. But of course, these will be specialist lawyers at the specialist court. Um, and I think it will be a real game changer for victims when they come to the Cairns Courthouse. So there's no plans for that to be rolled out in other regional small courts at this point? So we have a program of specialist courts. Currently we have specialist courts at Southport, Beanley, Townsville, Mount Isa and Palm Island and today I'm announcing Cairns uh, and there is further funding that will be rolled out for further specialist court locations in the coming months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess what have you been experiencing? Has there been a bit of a spike recently? Certainly for us, um, we've had an increase in Redbourne referrals, which is in fact the Queensland Police Services referral system into our service. And for us, um, our service has really needed to focus on triaging and crisis response um, and not necessarily being able to offer some of the more long-term therapeutic counselling that we have offered previously because we have actually seen um, some really significant um, numbers walking through our door and people who are just walking in or accessing us for the first time. So typically it's not unusual for us to have more than 300 new clients each quarter to come through our services as well as already having a cohort of often around 300 or more existing clients. So um, we certainly are a busy service and I would imagine that that is a, reflected by QPS. I also know that local leadership of QPS in Cairns is very, um, really focused on improving response and actually um, getting better outcomes. So I know that there's a really strong commitment from QPS locally for some of that response to improve and look better and become better pathways for survivors to reach out and get help. Do you concern that women Um, women already are. <laughs> um, so the court system is 
daunting. Sometimes there's concern that actually it could make things worse as well. So um, there are risk factors in sometimes going through the court process. So the more that we can do to increase comfort, the more that we can do to increase safety and hold those perpetrators accountable, um, hopefully that will increase confidence in actually being able to access the court system and have some accountability for those perpetrators who are using violence. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys.